As the world moves away from fossil fuels and towards cleaner forms of energy, one idea that's really gaining traction is that instead of tearing down these old power plants, instead reuse the site and equipment to build something greener. Here's something that will blow your mind. Over the next two decades, one third of all the currently operating coal power plants in the United States, over 150 of them, are set to retire and shut down. Just picture that. These plants that have been powering our homes and businesses for decades, all going quiet each one making around 400 megawatts of power, going quietly off into the smoky, smoggy sunset. Ah. And that leaves a hole that needs to be filled. One idea is to replace these retiring coal power plants with nuclear plants. A recent study by the US Department of Energy found that after an initial screening, about 80% of these retiring coal power plants would be suitable for advanced or small nuclear reactors. Because nuclear plants don't take up a lot of space and produce a similar power level, it makes sense that we could trade one for the other. What's more, according to the study, because the smaller plants could actually reuse the existing infrastructure, this could slash overnight capital costs, or the cost to build the plant, by as much as 35%, which on a billion dollar project is some serious money. So today, I want to get into the highlights of this study. Why coal plants are shutting down, can they be replaced by nuclear plants, and what challenges might we see along the way? So let's get to it. Why are coal plants shutting down? Coal plants have been an integral part of the power grid for generations. They've heated our homes, powered our industries, and allowed us to spend thousands of dollars to live entirely in a virtual world where we never have to physically ever see our family. But all of this is rapidly changing. So why are these old reliable plants of power production shutting down? Well, it all comes down to two key factors, the environment and economics. Over the past decade, we've seen a major shift towards cleaner energy sources. Governments around the world are tightening regulations, and most of us are becoming more conscious of our environmental footprint. Let's face it, coal is dirty. From the mining process to the smokestack, it leaves a heavy environmental toll. And while coal plants have made an effort to become cleaner, the fact is that they're still a major source of emissions and pollution. And then there's the economics. Modernizing coal plants to meet stricter regulations is a costly business. And let's not forget that mining coal isn't as cheap as it used to be. In fact, the average coal power plant in the US was built in 1976. That's half a century of wear and tear. Think about the oldest piece of technology you use, or a car from the 1970s. Now imagine that keeping the lights on hinges on that car operating day in and day out without fail. Yeah, I wouldn't rely on it either. There have been a lot of advancements over the last decades, and at some point it just makes more sense to upgrade to something new rather than trying to keep the old thing running. And to top it off for coal plants, financial institutions like banks are becoming more and more reluctant to fund these types of projects. Either the uncertainty of regulators continuing to impose requirements or public perception turning against them, they are not attractive investments. So between growing environmental awareness, aging infrastructure, and unfavorable economics, it's no surprise that so many coal plants are scheduled for retirement. The US currently still gets around 20% of its electricity from coal, but that number is way down from its peak of 50% back in 1997, meaning that more than half of the coal output has already shut down over the past few decades, a trend that will probably continue. But that leaves a big question. What's going to fill the gap that these coal plants leave behind? We're still gonna need electricity for our everyday lives. While there are a lot of possibilities, one of the most promising are advanced nuclear and small modular reactors, or SMRs. For those that might not be familiar, just so we're all on the same page, SMRs are essentially just small nuclear reactors, meaning they produce less electricity than you might see at a traditional large nuclear power plant, but they also take up less space and are easier to build. They also often use more advanced materials, fuels, and physics concepts that can lead them to being safer and more efficient. I don't want to go into too much detail, so think of SMRs as a new and improved, downsized version of a nuclear power plant. But the bottom line is, since SMRs have a similar power output to retiring coal power plants at around 400 megawatts, this makes them really good candidates for replacements. But here's where it gets really interesting. The US Department of Energy study I mentioned earlier looked at not one, but three different types of SMRs, each unique in their own way. The first is the new scale design, which is a water-cooled reactor similar to a traditional nuclear plant, but much smaller. These are designed to be housed together in a modular unit of up to 12 reactors, so the size can be scaled up or down to match the desired output. The second is TerraPower's natrium reactor. This design uses liquid sodium for the coolant, but also has a separate storage system to store thermal energy, like a big heat battery. This allows the plant to store energy when it's not needed, and then release it later when demand is higher. And the last design considered was X-Energy's XE100 design, a high temperature helium reactor with a unique pebble bed design. So depending on the specifics of the site, one design may be a more appropriate choice than another. 
For example, some coal plants use a superheated steam cycle, which means if we wanted to reuse the turbine, the XC100 may be a better choice because it produces similar temperatures. The point is that by considering all of these different designs, more options are available that could potentially replace different types of coal plants. But how do SMRs compare to coal plants if you're replacing one with the other? You can't just drop a giant nuclear plant where there used to be a tiny coal plant and expect everything to work. So there are three main things we need to consider. Power, cost, and impact on the local environment. We need to be able to replace one plant with another of a similar size. You might think if we have a 500 megawatt coal plant, we could replace it with a 500 megawatt nuclear plant. But unfortunately, it's not that simple because we also need to consider the capacity factor of each plant type. Let me give an example. If we have a power plant that can produce up to 500 megawatts, but can only operate nine months out of the year, we would say its output is 500 megawatts with a capacity factor of nine out of 12 or 75%. So we'll need to look at both the nominal output and the capacity factor in order to be able to compare one type against the other. SMRs can have power outputs ranging from 100 megawatts to over 1,000 megawatts by grouping several of them together. This compares well against coal plants, which are typically between 100 and 700 megawatts, with the average being around 400 megawatts. So far, pretty similar. However, and this is something that surprised me, coal plants have very low capacity factors, around 50%, which is terrible meaning half the time they're not doing anything and not producing any electricity. On the other hand, nuclear plants, including SMRs, often have capacity factors exceeding 90%, which means you don't need as much installed capacity for nuclear plants compared to coal plants, because the power output is much more reliable. Let's say we have a coal power plant that makes 400 megawatts, but a capacity factor of 50%. That means on average during the year, it is only making 200 megawatts, because the rest of the time it is either down for maintenance or other issues. If we then take a 300 megawatt nuclear plant, the power output is lower, but remember the capacity factor is higher, 90%, meaning that it produces on average 270 megawatts during the year. So even though the nuclear plant may be smaller, its higher capacity factor means it actually produces more electricity during the year than the coal plant. I know this can be confusing, so hopefully that makes sense. And what about costs? Isn't nuclear very expensive? And yes, it's true. SMRs, despite advancements in technology, still have heavy upfront costs, which could put them completely out of reach for some projects. But long term is where the scale starts to tip in their favor. SMR operating costs are usually lower than coal plants, mostly due to the fuel and reliability. Coal plants require a constant supply of fuel, and that can get expensive. With nuclear plants, the fuel is much less expensive for the same amount of energy which reduces operating costs in the long term. And that potential savings over the lifetime of the reactor, which could be 60 years or more, is massive. But there's another aspect of the economy that SMRs could boost, and that's local jobs. The Department of Energy study estimates that 650 new, higher paying jobs could be created per plant. And those jobs could be game changers for communities that used to rely on coal plants for employment. In fact, the study estimates that regional economic activity around the new plants could be as much as $275 million, which is an absolutely massive amount considering most of these plants are located near small towns. Now, for these towns that people live in, we can't talk about energy without addressing the elephant in the room, the environment. It's no secret that coal plants are a major source of carbon emissions, not to mention other pollutants like ash. These can have serious health effects on the people living near these power plants. And if it's something we can improve, why shouldn't we? SMRs produce essentially no greenhouse gases during operation. And there's a potential 86% drop in a region if we replace a coal plant with an SMR. And while nuclear waste is a challenge, it's a contained one, not belching into the air like coal emissions. So SMRs versus coal plants? It's not a matter of apples versus oranges. It's a question of the future of our energy landscape. So with all of that in mind, could SMRs actually replace retiring coal plants? Is it practical to reuse any of the leftover parts? Well, there are some advantages to doing that. It's like moving into an old house. You might have to replace the water heater, but the pipes and the windows and the doors are all still good. That's what's happening at these sites. There may be some parts that we can save rather than building new ones that would be almost identical. Office buildings, machines, the electrical framework, even the steam and turbine systems, all potentially could be saved. We can sift through the old, picking and choosing what we need for our new nuclear plant. And don't forget about the access to the cooling water either. There are limited sites for building new plants on rivers and lakes, so using an existing site is a huge advantage. And of course, let's not forget about the people that are at the heart of all of this, the local communities. Although there may be some positions that disappear, after all, we're probably not going to need any coal haulers anymore. Overall, there will be an increase in jobs, 
with the majority of employees being able to transition into a new, similar role, such as in maintenance. In addition, there could be hundreds of opportunities for high-tech, high-paying careers. After all, operating a nuclear plant is probably a bit more complicated than running a coal plant. So these new roles are going to need some talented and educated people. And this would allow people to upgrade their skills and move into higher paying positions. However, like anything in life, this transition isn't without its challenges. Things like site remediation and retrofitting are serious considerations. Design of the existing electrical and steam systems may not match exactly to the output coming from the nuclear reactors. And when it comes to safety and compliance, we need to make sure that there's a thorough understanding of the site and the local community. Let's put this whole transition into perspective. The study also included a scenario with two hypothetical companies that could be just like real companies that are looking to transition old coal sites to new nuclear plants. Let's call them Big Bang Energy and Legacy Lights Company. Big Bang Energy is a major player. It's got a huge portfolio of wind, solar, natural gas, coal, and even some nuclear. This company does it all and is basically the Amazon of energy providers. It's got a strong financial credit rating and a nice regular cash flow. We're talking a duck swimming in gold coins kind of cash flow. On the other side, we have Legacy Lights Company, an older, smaller utility. It's not as big or advanced, relying primarily on aging natural gas and coal. They're barely clinging to a mediocre credit rating and their cash flow, well, because of their small size and high operating costs, let's just say they're not swimming in any gold coins. So how can these two very different companies make the transition and repurpose their coal sites to nuclear energy? Big Bang Energy, with their stacks of cash and good credit, can afford to retire a couple of coal plants and replace them with new SMRs, reusing some of the old infrastructure to save costs and construction time. And they can weather the storm of reduced revenue while the switch is happening. They can even throw in some wind power to offset some of the generation and reduce their operating costs. And once the dust settles, after about seven years, they see their position improving from the more efficient operations, meaning they're ready for the long term. But what about Legacy Lights Company? They don't have the capital to make the big switch, and borrowing is too expensive for them. They can't withstand the reduction in cash flow during the transition period either. In this scenario, they do what they can, retiring one coal plant and partially offsetting that loss with some new wind power. It improves their position, but it's just not feasible for them to make the larger switch to nuclear. So what's the key to this big switch? Money. Just, just money. Access to capital. To weather the storm of reduced revenue during the transition period, you need a good rainy day fund or access to affordable lending. And that's something that could be a challenge for smaller, less diversified utilities. One real example we have is out in the Western United States in a place called Kemmerer, Wyoming, a place that is usually known for coal. However, there is a retiring coal plant which has partnered with a company called TerraPower to build up to five of their natrium advanced nuclear reactors. Now, not a lot of details have been shared on exactly how they'll be doing this, other than they'll be using the existing transmission of the site, which should reduce the construction costs. TerraPower says the first natrium unit should be online by 2030, but that date has already been pushed back several times due to complications on the construction site, as well as availability of the type of fuel that is going to be used, which so far is really only available from Russia. It'll be interesting to see if the project ends up being successful. In May 2023, TerraPower founder Bill Gates visited the site to show his ongoing support, touring the site where the plant will be built outside the small town. But let's not lose sight of the big picture here. Coal has powered our lives for more than a century. But let's face it, it's had its day. With concerns over air pollution and emissions, it's inevitable that we switch gears. So what comes next? Kemmerer might just be the first of many coal towns that finds a new lease on life thanks to advanced nuclear. They hold the potential to completely transform our energy landscape, and at the same time, give our local communities a much needed economic boost and transition for the future. And as with any ideas, there will be challenges. But if you want to see two other possibilities to replace coal plants, you should check out one of these videos. And thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.